We're talking about teaming yeah. and we're talking about how important it is. We're talking about the dynamics of change that may happen. How does that idea of emotion, because you touched about, you touched upon this before when you said the word conflict, right? Mm. There's almost like a precursor to conflict. And that yeah. would be what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people fired for mm -hmm. having a, an emotional moment at a project in front of a client mm -hmm. that was just zero tolerance, right? Yeah. So it's not like in the movies where we're watching bad bosses or something like this. Mm -hmm. There's a real consequence if we don't learn to get along. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in front, you know, a client or a customer, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there is a huge consequence. And I think that sometimes what people are doing is they're letting it build up internally. Uh, um, they're putting up with situations that are really untenable for them, thinking they can't mm -hmm. say something. They're not holding their boundaries, you know, and there may be a lot of organizational cultural reasons why they're having a hard time doing that. It might be the cu culture doesn't support it. So it's, it's, you know, it's very relational in that way. How are the people operating within their culture and what do they feel they're allowed to do? Uh, but ultimately, since we're all responsible for ourselves, you know, when people are getting to the point where they're exploding in a way that they weren't able to stop, you need to ask stress level, what's going on for them that they haven't taken care of? Mm -hmm. Or how is the organization treating them in a way that they felt that they couldn't take care of themselves? Doesn't conflict on teams affect our ability uh, to think and maybe even be creative? Yeah, conflict will add unresolved. So that I, I think of conflict mm -hmm. in two ways. There could be uh -huh. really positive conflict because you're having a passionate debate uh, and it gets you somewhere that's even more creative and innovative. And yeah. then there's the conflict you're talking about that's destructive, um, that usually mm -hmm. doesn't get resolved or someone's putting somebody down or it's a personal attack. Mm -hmm. uh, People aren't speaking up about important things. And that, yeah, they'll, that kills creativity. It kills innovation. It kills productivity. I mean, it is w one of the number one things that organizations have to learn how to handle. People have to handle. And ideally, I, I like to have teams have agreements around how they're going to handle conflict. Like this has actually been discussed. They have a designed agreement that says if a conflict occurs, and, you know, hopefully it will. If we're all just sitting around being nice, probably something's not being said. <laughs> You know, right. when a conflict occurs, this is how we, uh, you know, we'll handle it within a certain amount of time. We'll handle it this particular way. This is what we'll do. And everyone agrees to those ground rules. What is the delineating factor? If there is one thing that mm -hmm. you think kind of sets the sets an organization apart in a good way, what what mm -hmm. do you think has to be the juice in that? Generally speaking, it's it is their emphasis on their employees. It's how they're mm. treating their people, and of course their customers. But they you could have great customer service and not be treating your people well. <laughs> I think it's how they how they treat their people. Uh, absolutely. What is the you know and their as a byproduct of that how their culture is developing. What kind of culture do they have? What kind of how do they treat their people? What kind of turnover do they have? Is this considered a good place to work because people enjoy themselves? They feel challenged. They feel like there's a reasonable culture and a reasonable environment, you know, mm -hmm. um, and they feel supported. So that and in those environments, typically people feel a little more comfortable being vulnerable. There's a little bit more psychological safety. I think almost all organizations could still do a better job with it. You know, there's a handful that are probably superstars, but yeah, those organizations aren't really there. But that's the delineating factor I really see. And to the point of, you know, Sully, which I, I actually have seen that and one of the things that struck me, yeah, that he, how calm he stayed, but also how they were looking at the National Transportation Safety Board was their job, but how this man had saved 155 lives and they were still looking for the thing he did wrong. Yeah. And that struck me how in organizations we see that so often in a way, let's mm -hmm. find the thing that you did wrong. Mm -hmm. Or if we catch you doing something wrong, let's really focus on that. Right. And let's forget to talk about, you know, all the things that you did really well. Right. And that really kills people's souls. Mm -hmm.